Thank you, Madam Speaker. So this bill is going to become a press talking point on a referendum of whether or not we support small business in Minnesota. I can tell you that regardless of my vote here today that I definitely support the small businesses, the restaurants, the different things that we're talking about here today. Uh, like many of you, I've talked to dozens, if not hundreds, of businesses in my district, some outside my district, talked to employees, talked to managers, talked to county commissioners, I've talked to anyone that has a vested interest in rural Minnesota, as you know, everyone kind of knows everyone, so there's a lot of crossover. You know, one commissioner knows these two businesses, who knows this person. Um, when they first shut down the restaurants, they allowed for pickup, so I went around and uh, made videos and said, hey, guess what, it's, it's perfectly safe to go, be sure and shop your local people. And people I know did that in many different ways. I don't think I was the only one. Uh, but that's the sort of thing that we do in the communities. I can tell you that my wife and I probably eat out probably four or five times of what we used to just so that we can give these local businesses a little bit of money. In the past, in the past couple weeks when this came up again, I talked to several of them again. A couple of them spontaneously called me. So people are asking if we care, but they're all also asking if we have a better government. And um, in this past year, our government, particularly from the governor, uh, we have not been behaving well towards the people of this state. There's been multiple times uh, in the legislature when the governor has allowed us to have a voice. It's usually to spend money. We've done that many times here. Um, it's been a consistent process, last minute, no committees or uh, a makeshift committee. And if you want to include Ways and Means as a committee, I guess you can include that. Uh, this one, three weeks from special session, the last one three weeks before an election. General fund money is used when there's a tight budget. We have to have an agreement. I heard earlier we have to have an agreement because the Senate is already signing died. We can't do anything. We know this is gonna pass, folks. For anyone watching, this is gonna pass. There was an agreement that was made with the Senate. There was an agreement made with the governor. How it was formed, the reason why we recessed for a while was so that we can get that in shape and then the Senate could do it because we chose to do it that way first, then move over. I'm sure that was part of the agreement in the back rooms with just a handful of people talking. That's not better, Minna. That's not better government for the people and they're asking that also. Folks, this is crazy. I, I just jotted down. Why do businesses in a free country have to beg? Why did we make this about, well, this is going to happen, so as been, has been said many times tonight, at least we can give these people a little bit of money. It's probably not enough, and guess what? It's not gonna be enough, but at least it's something. At least we can show that we care. And I do believe that the people in this room, I do believe the people that worked on this do care, okay? I'm not questioning the integrity of that. I just don't know why we keep doing this over and over and over again. I do have um, just one uh, more thing that point that I want to make, but I, I'm going to have to do it by asking if um, if the author of this bill, Chair Mahoney, if he would be if he would uh, answer a few questions, Madam Speaker. Representative you Mahoney, will you yield? Yes, Madam Speaker. He will yield. Representative Miller. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And Chair Mahoney, I have a, there's about four or five questions that are kind of rapid and I'll just, I'll, I'll do the proper procedure, but I just want people to know that these are not an endless number of questions. I just kind of want to draw out a point here. So in the first uh, section, and it, the, the bill jumped around, so it's not Article 1 anymore, but the first section where we're going to be uh, sending money out to restaurants, one of them is bars, and we did look this up, and um, in bars, are gentlemen clubs or strip clubs included with bars in this? Would they be receiving money? Representative Mahoney. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Sad to say, if you fall into the category of a 30% reduction in your sales from the two quarters from last year, yes. 
And the reason for that is that um, the Department of Revenue can't separate that out. There's not a computer program to separate that out. There is not a single vote in support of gentlemen's clubs or whatever. There was a collective gasp or gulp, whichever you care to call it, when we realized that. And we're not happy with that. But speed was more important. Representative the Miller. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Would Chair Mahoney continue to yield for He question? will yield. Representative Miller. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. And, and Chair Ma or Madam Speaker, uh, Chair Mahoney, um, under, the, under the county fund, um, is it possible for adult entertainment stores to receive funding from this program? Representative Mahoney. Um, only if the county commissioner wants to lose his election or his or her election. Representative Miller. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and, and, and thank you for answering that. There is that possibility. And the reason why I bring these two up is, I mean, they're distasteful, okay? Um, and I'm not suggesting that anyone thinks that they're otherwise, but anyone that knows that I, since I've been here, I've worked a lot on human trafficking. These are two bastions of human trafficking. So understand that there is, for one, for sure, money will go if they qualify under the, under the guidelines, and another one may receive from locations where illegal activities are going on. Your taxpayer dollars, folks, could be going to that. In one case, it probably will be going to it. Um, I am promised, uh, Representative Mahoney, I won't squeeze you on that issue. I do have just two more questions if he'll continue to yield, Madam Speaker. He will yield, Representative Miller. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Chair Mahoney, um, if the businesses, this is under the county portion of it, if the businesses in the county don't like the decision, meaning they didn't get enough or they didn't get any or whatever, if they don't like it, do they have an appeal process to deed? Do they have an appeal process in any way that they can readdress this? Representative Mahoney. No. Representative Miller. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I promise this is the final question, and then I will make my final point. Um, will he continue to yield for a question? He will, Representative Miller. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, Chair Mahoney, um, will everyone who needs money receive what they need? Representative Mahoney. Of course not, Representative Miller. Okay, well, thanks, Chair Mahoney. And I'm, Representative I'm not, Miller. I apologize, Madam Speaker. And, and Chair Mahoney, I, I do thank you. You've been very respectful about this, and I don't, I don't want to be disrespectful or, or cheap shot, so I hope it's not coming across as that. I just want to make the point, and I could go on and on in a lot of other areas. I just kind of picked the low-hanging fruit, as they say, on a couple things that were obvious to me. There is no way that in the process, if you want to call it that, that we've put forward on this, there is no way that we can address the needs, the concerns, the problems and we are responsible for the taxpayer money. And then I also hear uh, from Representative Grossel, uh, some of the other representatives, that they're talking to people. And guess what? The businesses, the businesses are saying, we don't know that this is even going to significantly help us. And I hear things like, thanks for sending us scraps and stuff like that. And by the way, that's, that's been the consistent message that I've heard. I want to close with this. I received a text uh, from a business owner about two or three days ago. I will tell you this is consistent with my business owners in my district. And again, anyone that knows me, when I say I talk to business owners in my district, you can count on it. I have talked to a lot of them. And it says, good morning, Tim. I just heard on the radio that the legislature is working out details of a COVID relief bill for businesses and individuals affected by the governor's, in quotation marks, dial turning. It seems far more appropriate for the concerned legislators to vote to end the governor's emergency powers and allow Minnesota businesses to open and operate in a free market once again. This dictatorial rule of the state and of private businesses must end. I couldn't agree more with this constituent. We can fix this, members. We've been trying for months to end this, and when we get to uh, the, the, the motion after a while to end the emergency powers, I'm going to address this, but we have a resolution for this. But this is what government does. We create problems for private citizens. 
we, we harm them, we destroy their lives, and then we throw a little bit of money their way and say, aren't you thankful for us? I'm not real proud to be part of the legislature right now. I am. I'm not going to be supporting this bill. I am going to be supporting the people in my district. Thank you.